So as we celebrate his birth, we celebrate our birth in him. And we give you glory for that in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 as we were last week. We're going to start there. And uh, I think that over the years we've been uh, talking about the scope of why Christ came and what that means to us. Um, and I've had an opportunity to study a little church history. We used to, at our Bible school, we even taught church history for a little bit. But at the Bible school, there's a lot of church history that was uh, left out. So we got to go get a little fuller explanation of church history and the why of our Lord and Savior coming and how thankful we are to be that he came. Look at your neighbor and say, you ought to be thankful. <laughs> now, a while back, I, I was preaching in my excitement and I, I made a reference to one of the sermons that my mother used to preach. She was famous for preaching uh, as an evangelist and that's hell or holiness. Amen. Praise God. But that, 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 that was probably a correct title, but the inference was probably not right. Uh, because there's only, there's only holiness, amen, and some writers say, will say sin, and some writers would just go straight to the point, as I would, your body, amen, that's holiness or your body. Now, one of the things that um, we try to talk about is your perception. Everybody say perception. perception. See, perception has to do with what you think about yourself. Amen. And it's very important that you understand this because what you think about yourself is projected out and you create experiences to bear witness to what you think about yourself. Amen. It's, it's, it's how you perceive yourself. It's, it's how your life has been tailored. You've been blaming the devil and God. It's really you and what you think about yourself. Now, religion has helped mess that up by taking you completely off point to believing that you are a body. You know, we believe we are bodies because we're body conscious, and we believe that we are bodies. Amen? So, you know, we've been coming along, fussing with you guys, trying to get you to change your perception by having you say, I am not a body. But that's fine in church. You know, you come together with us crazy folk that say that, and you say, I am not a body. Then you go and you have body pains, body symptoms, body aches. Amen. So I'm not a body may not resonate in your house like it does with other believers. But even, but remember what I said about perception. Because you underestimate how powerful you are. You know, you, you, you don't have, you have no idea of your power. You have no idea of your power because the reason you have the body aches and the body problems is because of what you think about yourself. You think, I am a body. So you get all this body evidence that you're a body. That's why we've been trying to hypnotize you, mesmerize you, convince you. You're not a body, so we, we change your perception of yourself. You change your experiences. Amen. I know that's kind of, I mean to start off like that. I mean to start off in deep water. I actually meant to start off in shallow water and kind of gradually move down a little bit. But, that, 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 but that's how it is. And so you have hints in the scriptures by wise people who contacted God, and they would say stuff to leave breadcrumbs for you. 
but you will learn how to think. And one of the breadcrumbs that a lot left for you is one of the scriptures that say, whose report are you going to believe? Now that means there has to be a decision between two reports. And you have to choose which one you're going to believe. Another breadcrumb is in the scriptures is when God says through the prophet, he says, come let us reason together. Look at your neighbor and say, come, come let us together. reason, reason together. together. Now, perception and reasoning are not the same. I want you all to hear that. Because reasoning comes from a spot that perception cannot visit. Ooh, that's your holy self. Reason is in your holy. Uh, see, the reason that the scriptures are talking about is not in your head, because what's in your head is just a collection of your experiences. But reason is the unknown and the remembrance, the amnesis to remember where you come from. It's, it's living in a state of remembering. See, we told you and scriptures tell you that you was with God before you were formed in your mother's womb. So your beginning ain't your mama and your daddy. Your beginnings is with God. You just done forgot. Amen. See, see, your memory goes back to earth dwelling and not eternal living. And so the Spirit of God is here to help you remember your eternal estate. Because though your body is temporary and is passing away, you are eternal. Look at your name and say, I live forever. Oh, it. See now, see now, this body earth experience is just a, is just an experience. It, it doesn't mean, it. I mean, and it really doesn't mean anything compared to your eternity. Now, one of the things that God was, was sharing with me uh, last night and this morning uh, when I was going over this in my mind, um, he said, just like you don't remember your beginnings, just like you don't remember your eternal life, you won't remember this. Y'all don't know how to get happy. You won't remember this. Because when you come back into yourself, why would you want to remember this? Yeah. See, so all this worry is about nothing. You know, cause, and we tell you, well, you know, when we see Jesus, we're going to tell him all about our problems. No, we're not. We ain't, we're not even going to tell him about this. We don't even want to talk about hell. Once you get to heaven, you don't want to talk about hell. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and there are Bible hints, like you're not, gonna, you're not giving to marriage. I mean, it just, it just tells you, you don't have the same hang you don't have the same needs when you complete as you have when you were down here on earth, incomplete. You needed a wife, you needed a husband, amen, because you were so insecure, your ego needed to be padded up. And, and one another thing that we do, because we are egos, we worship God like he an ego. Oh, praise God. We do. Like, like. I don't know about, let me talk about me because I can't be an ego. Oh, yes. My wife said, well, Nancy. <laughs> I can really be an ego. Like Friday night, I went to my friend's birthday uh, uh, party, and I was an ego. You know, I'm, I'm an ego. I, I, I got dressed, and when I finished getting dressed, I looked in the mirror and said, you fine. <laughs> <laughs> you are, you, sh you sharp, 
Boy, you laid, you, you are dressed. I mean, you, I was like, everything was right in place. Everything was right. Tie bow, everything was cool. I was, I was sharp, head shaved right. <laughs> Smelled good. And then, you know, when people say, you know, oh, man, that's a bad suit. Everybody talked about my suit. Everybody, everybody talked about my suit. Everybody said, that's a nice suit you got on. That's a nice suit you got on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah hey, Doc, that's, Doc, that's a good little, yeah. You got to give me that suit, Doc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, when I get through with it, you can have it. Amen. Ego. All of us got it. Don't tell me you don't like to be told you look good, especially when you work at looking good. You don't look good by accident. You get in that mirror and you doing your fluffing, you know, you got a natural, you fluff your natural, you got curls, you're curling your curls, you got braids, you're doing your braids, you, you're putting on your jewelry, your accessories, your, he, your shoes got a mess. Come on, talk to me, y'all. Ego. And when people recognize the effort of us getting dressed, we feel appreciated. Amen. Praise God. Some of y'all are delivered, but not all of us. <laughs> and we worship God like he's an ego. Like he has to be reminded about how good he is. And the more we remind him how good he is, the more we are endeared to him. We feel that we do really good worship, we get really close to God. You close to God when you wasn't worshiping him. God has never not been close to you. You are his expression. The Bible says that you are his glory. Uh -huh. Ooh, praise God. So all you got to do is start thinking of yourself, not as a dirty, filthy rag, but as the glory of God, as God's smile, as God's joy, as God's love, as God's expression. Start thinking of yourself differently and quit thinking of yourself differently victimized, separated from God. Because God has promised you he would never leave you. Now, this is how much God loves you. Even when you're going in a bad experience, he'll have it with you. As long as you think you deserve a bad experience, he will be in that with you. He won't separate you. He said, no, girl, that stink is just too stinky for me. I don't want to get that stinky. When you decide to come to yourself, I'll join myself. But that's not God. That might be a friend of yours, but that's not God. God loves you and respects your insanity. You can be crazy enough to choose to go down the wrong road. He said, well, I, you can't get rid of me by making the wrong choice. Religion, however, will abandon you accuse you, condemn you, and walk away from you, but you ought to be rejoicing that God is not religious. He doesn't have to be. He doesn't have to be because he knows you. He knows that he thought of you and that you're never far from his mind. You have to remember your source and draw your life from your source which is God Amen. not your past experiences Amen. in the body yeah. but your eternal reality in him Amen. so we we, we, we we have these words over the years because this is the close of the year we have these words over the years you know we come into being as we pass away because we're so in love with the body we don't like to think about passing away Aren't you glad God loves you beyond your body? <laughs> Praise God. Look at the name and say, you, your body is beautiful. But you look better than your body. So I'm going to go back to 1 Corinthians chapter um, 15, and I'm going to start reading at verse 35. I've been doing enough introduction for you to get there by now. 
this is not just the celebration of Christ. This is the celebration of all humanity. All of humanity have entered into the new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. And all things are of God. Man, oh man. Boy, y'all need to just be happy. Yeah, I, you know, isn't it wonderful when somebody, and that, that, that's the signature of Christmas. Christmas is giving gifts. A gift is something you receive that you didn't work for. But somebody is blessing you with something based on how they think about you. Sometimes the gifts they give you have to do with them recognizing a need and they fulfilling that need for you. And so at this particular date, they'll give you that. Or sometimes they just want you to have something. Amen. I just want you to have this sweater. I just want you to uh, have uh, these pair of shoes. I just want you to have those Nikes or that tablet. Amen. I just want you to have this diamond ring. I just want you to have this car. Bless me, Lord. Bless me. Come on, y'all. Y'all don't know how to get happy. Somebody just wants you to have something, and they're going to gift it to you, and you're gonna, at least you're going to say thank you. At least you're going to say smile, and, and, and you're going to use it, right? You're not going to re-gift it. How many people would re-gift a Lexus? So you want to re-gift a Lexus? Amen. <laughs> Does it make a difference? <laughs> Uh, Brianna say one year. Well, you want to re- re-gift that. So th- this is God's gift, your eternal life, your eternal existence, your eternal sonship that you can't lose is his gift to you. Amen. And we're so thankful that we begin to imitate. Uh, take him by giving others, our sisters and brothers, our families, gifts, so we Im- imitate. It ain't got nothing to do with no Santa Claus. It has nothing to do with whether you were naughty or nice. It has to do with how much he loves you. So in verse 35 it says, but someone will say, how are the dead raised up? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 35. How are the dead raised up, and with what body do they come? And then Paul says, foolish one, what you sow is not made alive unless it dies. And what you sow, you do not sow the body that shall be. But mere grain, perhaps wheat or some other grain. So what he's saying is, as an example, look at the seeds you sow. Amen. I like, I like uh, the watermelon seed or the corn kernel, any of those kind of things that you sow. You don't get back what you sow. It comes in a different body. Woo. See, there's a glory in the seed that the seed doesn't even give you a glimpse of. I mean, like, I know, you know, we, we said, we, I used to uh, do rose, roses. I, I, we would have pictures of that. And some of you who plant, you know, you got to have gardens on your uh, seed package. You got a picture of what that seed will become after it's germinated and sprouted and grow up. It'll, it'll look like that. But the seed is, a, take the picture away, the seed doesn't look like that. And there are some beautiful plants that come from some ugly-looking seeds. Woo. I said, there are some beautiful plants. I, I, I'm, I'm staying there on purpose. There are some beautiful plants that come out of some ugly-looking seed. Because there's some beauty in the ugly. Woo. See, God has placed his glory in you. <laughs> There, there, there is life in you. And, and, and I love the scriptures when they give you a hint. He says, it hasn't, it hasn't entered your eyes. Your eyes haven't seen. Your ears haven't heard. Nor has it entered the mind of man. Uh-huh. Wait a minute now. Not even you, are, you can't even imagine what God has hid on the inside. Oh somebody look at somebody and say Amen. 
You can't imagine. You haven't heard about it. You haven't seen anything like it. And it hasn't even entered your imagination. The other day the girls were singing, blow my mind. He about to blow your mind. Look at your neighbor and say, he about to blow our mind. And see, all, all this life is, it's just littered with the glory of God from here to there. And see, and we want to just draw that goodness out. We want to make it always. No, it's just a taste. He didn't tell you I'm going to give you the meal. He says I'm giving you a taste of your eternal existence to keep you motivated to keep going forward. Oh, suck it out. So every once in a while, you have one of them days that's very memorable. You keep on replaying that day in your mind over and over again because that was a good day. And if you haven't had a good day, I pray that you get one soon. If you haven't had a good kiss, I hope you get one soon. If you haven't had a good hug, I hope you get one soon. You gotta get, y'all, y'all need some encouragement to keep on going. Some folks just don't get nothing. They just, they're just ugly because they ain't never had nothing good. So they all, they're just ugly because they, all they had is ugly. They don't know how to give out nothing but ugly. And they don't know how to be kind. They don't know how to be beautiful. Amen. Please, your neighbor, say, I'm so, I'm so glad he's not talking about you right now. Amen. You know how to be human because Jesus showed us how to be 100% divine and 100% human. And when you touch somebody and move somebody, you're being divinely human. You're encouraging someone. You're blessing and not cursing somebody. You're kind when other folks don't know how to be kind. Because the spirit inside of you is greater than the failing flesh outside of you. Amen. My spirit is strong, though my flesh is weak. And for all y'all folks still hung up on sin, amen. The only reason you're thinking about sin is because you think of yourself as a sinner. When you stop seeing yourself as a sinner, start seeing yourself as holy, because the, the scriptures never tell you to be a sinner. The scriptures say, be ye holy. Oh, y'all know it? Holy. Wait a minute, y- y'all, know, y'all know that? Yes. Y'all heard that? Yes. Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Y'all finished the sentence for me? Yes. That means you know. Yes. Then why don't you do what you know? It says, be ye what? Holy. It says, be ye what? Holy. Well, just be holy. See yourself, identify yourself with being what? And then you're going to produce holy experiences. You're going to produce favor in your life because you think of yourself as being holy, but it just don't tell you to be holy using your own imagination because he knows your mind can't go that high. It says be holy as, as I, he is what? Look at your neighbor and say, I'm holy. As he is holy. Tell it, say, we twins. I'm holy. You ain't nothing but a sinner. No, I don't know about you. I don't know what you see. See, if you look at me and see a sinner, because you think of yourself as one. Because the Bible, another hint, Gerald, to the pure. So if, if, if you're pure, you can't see nothing else but... If I'm pure, I can't see them but pure in you, Jonathan. You, you might be the baddest thing on the city, but all I can recognize is your pureness. And that's the only thing I'm going to address is what's in you that reflects me. If I'm criticizing you, I'm seeing me in you. If I'm angry with you, I am seeing me in you. And another thing that I learned this week, if you want to get along with somebody, say, I want to get along. Quit expecting to see yourself in other people. You, and, and you know it, you know, if that was me, I wouldn't do that. Well, quit trying, it ain't you. So quit trying to see yourself in other people. 
recognize other people as themselves and, th and recognize their limitations and never expect anything beyond their limitation. So you will never be, come on, talk to me, disappointed. The only time you're disappointed because you try to see yourself in somebody else. The only thing you want to see in them is Christ, the hope of glory. <laughs> I see hope in you. I see Christ in you. I see the hope. I see the hope of glory. And hope, amen, is faith's foundation. If, if I have some hope, I got some foundation for some faith. And faith is great. Your gift today is great faith. Ooh, amen. See, I can give it to you, but you got to use it. Look at the name and say, your gift today is great faith. Now watch this. Who gives faith? Your Christ God. Okay, God gives faith. God gives faith. Is God great? So how could God, who's great, give anything that's not. If God gave you faith, it couldn't be bad faith. If God gave you faith, it could not be weak faith. If God gave you faith, it could not be little faith. So you have not used the gift that God has given you, and it's a gift. You didn't earn it. He gave it to you as a what? gift, so now you, and, and faith is so powerful that whatever you believe about yourself, your faith will make you act in accordance with it. So all you got to do is believe a certain way, and faith will move, put action in, into your behavior. Faith puts action to what you believe. Your faith is greed, is great. If you don't think you're worth nothing, you're going to act like you wor you're not worth anything. Your faith is going to keep you in bed. You're going to keep talking yourself out of every opportunity. You're going to keep talking yourself into poverty until you get what you think about yourself. And once you arrive at poverty, you'll say, I knew I wasn't nothing. That's because you had faith. You was a nothing. You have exactly what you permit into your own life. As you think of yourself, so are you. So what are you saying about yourself? I mean, let's say, let's say it this way. Let's say it don't work. Let's say what I'm talking about is crazy and nonsense. So you wake up every day and say, I'm great, I'm great, I'm great, I'm great, I'm great. And it don't work. Well, at least you went all day long saying you were great. Feeling good about yourself. That's something. Mm -hmm. I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. And say you're not. But at least you've been saying it all day long. Feeling good about yourself. I'm great and I'm blessed. I'm on top, and I'm, on, and I'm increasing. So some way, somewhere, something shows up to complement what you've been saying about yourself. Ooh. And you'd be like that, that blind man. I was blind. But now I see. This is what I know. Then you begin to know something about yourself. And you need to quit measuring your faith on somebody else's failure. Because people never tell you the truth about what they really believe. I'm telling you the truth. People experience what they believe about themselves. Because you have authority and God has never taken it back. The Bible says God has not relented or repented from his gifts. He, give, he has given men all authority on the earth. He has never relented or repented from it. So that means you always have authority. You've just been talked out of the power that you have. 
thinking that you're thinking too much of yourself. You're thinking too, no, you're not. You think too much of yourself if you think you're not blessed. Amen. You out your mind and insane if you don't think that God loves you and blessed you. And then God comes along and he says, all my promises. Woo. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm preaching my own self happy. All my promises. All my promises. I ain't got a maybe. I don't have a wait. Come on now. You say, uh, so, some of my promises, I just want you to wait. I don't, I don't want you to get the big head, so I, I, I won't let you. No, he said, all my promises. All my promises. All my promises. Y'all know that one too? A uh, yes and amen. I do not relent, nor do I repent. All my promises are yea and amen. And then God gave me the revelation and tell you, the answers to your prayers don't look like what you expect. Because you expect them in the physical, but they are spiritual. And the first person that has to be affected is you, the spirit man. And your spirit man, once you change, he gives you vision. Now, I'm going to close with this. I told you that reason, all right, is different from your perception. It's in your reason. God said, come, let us reason together. That he gives you a vision, which will change your perception of the way things are and what it is about you. And the Bible says, my people perish. Because they don't have no vision. They don't have no vision. Which means they're not, they don't have reason. Their perspective is messed up. Because vision and perspective are two different things. Oh, come on now. So what we're here to do is give you some vision. You need to have vision. Because as you visualize something, you're transformed into what you see. You can't do nothing unless you have vision to get it done. You got to see yourself there before you get there. If you can't conceive it, you can't achieve it. Are y'all listening to me? So the gift of Christ is to give you a new mind, a new life that has no sin, no boundaries, no death, but the law of life works in you because Christ is in you. Come on now. Now your body is going to fight against it because your body is wrecked with sin. It is all about sin, but sin shall not rule you. Look at your neighbor and say, sin shall not rule me. Not rule me. Gerald, you're a nice guy. <laughs> you're a nice guy. You're a nice guy. You're a kind guy. And your kindness is shelter. You should embrace more people with it and not be so stingy. Amen. Share and you multiply. Share and you multiply. Give and it's given back to you. Oh, y'all understand the laws of God. See, we've been trying to hold on to something when when you release it, it multiplies. The more you give, the more it's what? Given, given back to you. So whatever you are, give it out. You have a gift. All of you have a gift. Let your gift make room for you. This is a season for giving. So take your gift and bless somebody with it. Amen? I said take your gift and bless somebody with it. Because it is more blessed to what? Give than it is to receive. And giving just make you feel good. So I'm going I'm to get y'all started. Everybody stand on your feet. I'm going to get y'all started right now. 
saying this is a merry, merry day. Oh, yeah, come here, come here, Brianna. You're going to be my, my, my subject. Look how pretty you are. God, you're just gorgeous. Your daddy and mama did a pretty good job. Did a pretty good job. So I want you to give somebody a hug. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. My Bobby always neglected. Give my hug. Oh. Don't just hold on to that. <laughs> Ain't time for that yet. <laughs> All right. Just knock my camera. Does not my camera. Now watch this. Now, now you know what happened? You know what happened when you gave a hug? You know what happened when you gave a hug? You got one back. See, you can't get nothing you ain't giving out. If, if you want somebody to kiss you, give a kiss. You, you need a hug, give a hug. You can always receive what you give. Amen? With that, we want to remind you, God has plans for your life, and none of those plans include defeat. Merry Christmas, everybody.